All right, so today we're going to do a video going over HTTP2 and Rust. Let's get it. All right, so normally I would start off the video by going through what is HTTP2. However, in the interest of time, I think it's best to go backwards, as in start from the end and then work to the beginning. So starting backwards, we're going to start looking at Hyper first, right? Hyper is a underlying crate that a lot of web frameworks use as a dependency to do all of the HTTP stuff. In their documentation, they state that they support HTTP 1 and HTTP 2. Okay? If you look through their issues, you'll find that they do not have support for HTTP 2 PUSS, which is a little confusing. You can have support for HTTP 2 but not support for HTTP 2 PUSS Okay, going on another web framework, we have Actix Web, and in their documentation, they state that they support HTTP 1 and HTTP 2, but they're in a similar boat because if you look through their issues, they also have an open issue out for adding support for HTTP 2 push. So why is that? Um, it turns out that a lot of libraries, if not all of the Rust ecosystem, more or less, is dependent upon this guy, which is Hyperium H2. And what is it? It's a Tokyo-aware HTTP2 client and server implementation for Rust. So recently, um, and asterisk on the recent, H2 added support for HTTP2 push. And now we're just waiting for the um, web frameworks that are downstream to add their implementations for it, like add all the stuff to use this in their web framework. Going back to the original question, can we use HTTP2 in Rust right now? And the answer is yes. The reason why the answer is yes is because the difference between HTTP1 and HTTP2 is more or less a refactor, as in if you're using HTTP2 server, all of the same things that you would use in HTTP1 server would still work, like the git calls, like all of the outer layering still works. It's just the internals that have changed, with the exception of the push thing that we've been looking at. And I'm not sure if I defined push yet, so let me just plug that in here too. Um, so in terms of HTTP2, push is the ability for a server to push data to the client without the client having to request that data. As in, the client's going to ask for, let's say, a web page. As a server, I know this web page has other data associated with it, let's say, a JavaScript file or CSS file. As a server, I want to preemptively push that data to the client. So when the client realizes they need it, they'll be like, oh, we already have it. That in its core form is the HTTP2 push server um, philosophy, code, implementation, whatever you want to call it. All right, so now that we have a better understanding of what HTTP2 is, why are we still able to use it in Rust? And to the answer that question, we should go to the hyper documentation because that's like the best way that like internalized for me why we can still use this. I said documentation, but I meant cargo file. So in Hyper, right, if you go to the cargo file and you scroll down, you'll see that under features you have HTTP2. So you can get it out as a full feature or you can get it as just requested explicitly, right? And in terms of the server, what does this actually mean? So if we look at the Hyper server server documentation, it states a listening HTTP2 server that accepts connections in both HTTP1 and HTTP2 by default. As in, as long as you request the feature of HTTP2 from Hyper, your servers will support HTTP2. So, knowing that, if you want to see if your current web framework that is dependent on Hyper supports HTTP2, then you just have to look at the cargo file and see if they request that feature. So since I've been using warp, let's look at warp. 
and then warp the cargo file, we see that right here, hyper requests HTTP2. Thus, warp supports HTTP2. Let's look at another web framework that supports or that is dependent on hyper. Rocket is also another web framework that is dependent upon hyper. And if we scroll through their TOML file, you can see that when we get to hyper version 0.14 and right here, they request HTTP2. So Rocket also supports HTTP2. All right. So we talked about service. Next thing to talk about is clients, right? And if we look at the hyper documentation again, we know that hyper is both a server implementation and a client implementation. So here in the hyper client builder, we see that if you want to build a client that uses only HTTP2, you can pass in a flag. And I suspect, mainly because I already looked at the request documentation, but I suspect that by default, it will use HTTP2 or one, just depends on how you feel at the time, or what the server accepts. And the reason why I say that is because if we go to requests, and requests go about here. So if we go to requests and we're in the, let me get out of the source code so you can see where exactly I'm at. If you go to the client builder documentation, right? And you do a search for HTTP2, we see a number of different methods here that you can use. Um, one example is this one, HTTP2 underscore adaptive underscore window. And it doesn't really say much, but it does state that it's HTTP2. If you go to the source code and do another search for HTTP2, and let's scroll up about here, we see that in the config, you have options for HTTP2 only, and then you have other stuff that's HTTP2, like the methods that we saw. And if you keep going down, what I found that was interesting, one, the HTTP2 only is off by default, but more importantly, this. So here, and I don't know exactly where we are, but in terms of the context of what this reads to me as, if the flag for HTTP2 only is on, then set protocols only for H2. If the that flag is not on, or if that flag is false, then have both HTTP2 and HTTP1 protocols there. So request by default supports, can support both at the same time. I guess it just depends on the server that you're interacting with. Um, with that said, I assume that the hyper client does the same thing. Not positive, but yeah, I think it does. So with that said, we're almost to the end of the video. I say almost because there's one thing left that I would like to share. And that is one of the articles I was reading while doing research on this that explains the difference between HTTP1 and HTTP2. And that's this. Um, this Digital Ocean article was very clear, at least for me, in explaining HTTP 1, HTTP 2, what the problems were, how HTTP 1 solved it, and then how HTTP 2 solved it. And in reading that, you get an understanding of why this PUSS implementation uh, for the server thing is actually possible. So that kind of just cemented my understanding of what the differences between the two were. And if you have time, I suggest you read it. I'll link it in my description of the video that said we have reached the end of the video if you like the video hit like subscribe yada 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 outside of that peace